Kelly. Anthony. You you bringing in seven figures a year. Yeah. You've been consistent with that for two years. Could you date a brother who work at Walmart? Now. What's happening? No captain. We with AO about to get a plate. Oh, pull up to the table. Let's go. The number one rising entrepreneur in America today is a black woman. A black woman who may be single, raising two, three kids, starting a business, working a full time job. But she says, hey, I have to step up to the plate so I can provide for my family and live the life that I desire for myself. And since I'm doing it by myself, I'm going to set up something for my kids so they can have a legacy. Brothers, we got to step up to the plate and handle our responsibility. But queens, you all are winning. And today's show is dedicated to you. And if you're one of the queens watching this and you're saying, yo, I need some encouragement, lock in. Get locked in. Get a pen, get a paper, get your iPad, get your iPad pen, and write down some notes. Because today, we have a young lady on the show. Her name is Ellie. I've been following her for about a year. Um, and I've had a lot of people reach out to me and say, yo, you need to get Ellie on the show. You need to get Ellie on the show. And y'all know me. I'm very careful about who I bring to the table. Because number one, we keep it real, relevant, and relatable. And I have to make sure that this person can be real, um, that the information they share is real, okay? And it's relatable for us. And it inspires you. How can it influence you? How can it impact you? So you can go out there and produce some income on how you were influenced and impacted. So I'm extremely grateful to have this queen on the show today. Uh, because she is a beast. So welcome to the table, LA. Give me some love. Girl, you're, you're looking good, girl. I got a little brown on. Brown on brown. You know. <laughs> okay, um, then. Ellie said, ah. Uh, skin popping. Uh, all right. I'm liking this shirt, though. I, I think like it's it. good. It's pink. I like Sorry. pink. Real men wear pink. It, um, listen. Real men wear pink. Listen, I'm feeling it. Now, you can't see. What, I got on like some sweats and some blue shoes, but it's all good. But he's looking good. Yeah, I'm in my house. Um, so, hey, let's get straight into it. Yeah. Uh, because I've been following you for about a year now. And, man, your journey has really been something. All right. So, let's let's start off from the very beginning. Uh, you're 30 now? Almost. Almost. I turned 30 in June. In June. In June. My sister's birthday is in June. <sighs> Which, June, what, what, what day? She's June 4th. I'm June 21st. Okay. Okay. So you're close to me because I'm July 1st. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I need some birthday gifts. Oh, birthday gifts. we're just 10 days apart. Oh, yes. We got to have a joint birthday party. And you're in, I mean, you're in my home city. We may make that happen. Um, if it's a, if it's us together, <laughs> all I'm going to say is I'm a lot of money. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> and the majority of the money will come from her, not me. Not ah! <laughs> yo, yo. So you're 29, turning 30 this year. Let's fast forward or rewind 10 years ago. You were, when were you married? I got married at 20. I met him at 19. You met him at 19, got married at 20. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Why did you get married so young? You know, in hindsight, right? Uh -huh. Um, I thought he was the one. Okay. okay. Thought he was the one. Okay. Thought it was the right time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wanted to kind of get my life situated early. Mm -hmm. I knew that I wanted to just make moves, you know, mm -hmm. get a really good job, start building. Okay. And he was cute. You know, what, what, when we're 19 and 20, what's important, right? Okay. How does he look? Yeah. Does he have the right talk? I yeah. didn't listen to my parents. They told me to wait. Was money a play in the game? No. Was he making money? Like good money. I mean, no. of course he was making money. No, yeah, but not good money. Okay, okay, okay. It wasn't that at all. It was just like... We're both young. Let's do this. Let's build together. Okay. I can do this. We can do this. Yeah. And I just jumped. You just jumped. I just jumped, you okay. know. So young, didn't know any better, didn't take the guidance I needed to, okay. and believed I could just make life happen. Yeah, yeah. Just doing what I wanted to do. Love it. Love it. Okay. All right. All right. So fast forward. Yeah. Um, from 20 to now, um, you, out of that relationship, you got, you got four. Four kids. Three, four, yes. And the By last the, two are twins. The last two are twins. Mm -hmm. You have four kids. At, All four kids. By what age? By 20, 28. Well, 27, I gave birth to the twins. 27 Can with four kids. Yeah. Where were you at in that season of life? Like, income-wise, job-wise. Like, were you in a good, healthy place when you brought in four kids into this life, into this world? So, you know, I've always had good jobs. I worked in corporate America. I was making six figures by the time I turned 24, 25. Okay. okay. Um, so I've always had good jobs. The problem was 
He didn't, uh, right? So everything was on me. I got you. I was taking care of the husband, okay. birthing the babies, yeah. breastfeeding the babies, yeah. going to work, bringing in the income, oh. getting promoted, birthing more babies, yeah, taking yeah. care of the home, paying the rent. I mean, it was just You was like doing everything? Everything. I was just and where were you living in? Um, so at first, I lived with my dad. Okay. Then we got our own place yeah. um, in Florida. Okay. What part of Florida? Tampa. Tampa. Okay, okay. I, yeah. I, I just, I did- Six years in Jacksonville. Oh yeah. wow! Yeah, yeah. Florida's an interesting place. It is. Stuff be happening. Absolutely. You know. Yeah. Tampa is a, it's the truth though. It is. Some good looking girls out there. Ain't gonna oh lie. my god. Oh, Lord. Okay, back to the story. Back to the story. <laughs> All right. So you lived in Florida. Yep. So Florida, then moved to LA. Okay. LA is where I got. I would say my best job. That's when I started making six figures out okay. here. Okay. Okay. But if you know LA, a hundred twenty thousand some thousand dollars. That's not it's usually, pretty much yeah. still sixty thousand or fifty thousand right. dollars. Right, right. So at that point, I had my second child. So I had two kids by then. I was like wow. 24, 25. Okay. Um. Then moved to Texas. Yeah, yeah. Around twenty six, twenty seven. Okay. That's when I was pregnant with the twins. Wow. Right before the pandemic, I laid off from the job, gave birth to the twins, and then I asked for a separation. Two months after the whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Flag on the plate. <laughs> I'm using my homegirl, Michelle Williams. Flag on the plate. Flag. Pandemic hits. Pandemic hits right after. You moved to Texas. Yes, basically. So pandemic hits right after I moved to Texas in the midst of the divorce. Because I got divorced, finalized February 2020. Okay. Pandemic hits. What was that? March? April? Yeah, yep, yep, yeah. Yep. So, so you asked for the divorce. Before End of 2019. the pandemic hit, mm -hmm. pandemic hits you. Then you lose your job. Correct. You're now you're a single mother, and I live at home with my mom. And you live at home with your mom. Yeah, I moved home to my mom with four kids. With four kids in Texas. No, in L.A. In I moved LA. back to L.A. You moved back to L.A. Let me tell you something. When I moved back to L.A., it was just me and all the four kids. Anthony, I want you to picture me with four kids going through the airport with five luggages, four children. Two of them in a stroller, taking periodic breaks to go breastfeed the twins alone. Alone? I had to make the journey alone. How'd you get through the airport? I had I'm help. just in because it's a struggle for me to pull too. Listen, people saw me and uh -huh. just started helping me. Literally. That was just God. They saw me with these kids in these bags and were like, What what's happening? And I'm just like, I need to get back to my mom's house. And they helped me. I'm I'm curious, Ellen. Yeah. How were you emotionally then? Moving back home with your mom, four kids, 26, 27 years old, yeah. not married. The last five years of your life, you've been carrying this workload, it seems like. Huge. How were you internally? How were you emotionally? You know, it was, it was a tough time. Mm. It was a tough time. I think... The only thing that got me through in those moments was God. Yeah. yeah. You know, I'm Muslim, so I pray five okay. times a day. Okay. I'm so connected to okay. that source. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it was extremely challenging. You know, when you have an idea of what your life is going to be, yeah. and when it takes a completely opposite turn from that in right. a quick period of time, yeah. you feel like your life is in shambles. Wow. I mean, I felt like here I'm here I am with four kids. I'm I'm thinking these people probably think I'm somebody's baby mama. Yeah, yeah, They're yeah. probably like, you know, oh, this woman doesn't have her life together. You know, and I felt like, yeah. do I not have my life together? Because I went from being married to what we praise as a great thing yeah. to now being unmarried when I knew I was getting out of an unhealthy situation. Right. But it felt like I was going from one unhealthy thing right into another. That's now cool. living at home at my mom's at 20, 26, 27 years old with no job. It's not cute. It's not. It's, 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 it it's, wasn't cute. I can only imagine that. You know what I'm saying? And and I really wanted to start at the at the base of your story. Yeah. Because that was one season of your life. Yeah. Now you're in a completely completely different season. And um, sometimes you see shows they'll start off with all the glam, all the ah! right. But then they don't really spend time in that season. Uh, because there's some of you all watching right now, right? And I feel as if I wanted you all to meet Ellie mm -hmm. and really understand her from the the where she was. 27 with four kids. You know, had to move back in with her mom after being married, after making six figures and doing well, but she carried out a workload and had to go back home. 
Um, you know, some of you all are watching this right now saying, I, I relate to that. Man, I, I understand that. Man, I'm, I'm in that right now. Yeah. What I want to encourage you is get a pen and paper because we're about to give you some wisdom and some knowledge on how to start switching uh, that season in your life, on how to adjust and how to move from the season you're in right now to a whole completely different season. And 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 here's the thing. I want to be honest. Um, it's not going to be easy. Yeah. Uh, but you have everything on the inside of you to get there. You know, um, Ellie reminds me of me, just um, a different version of me. You know, I she went back home. I went to the back of my car. Mm. And what pays us now is the gifts and the talents that are on the inside of us. And so, you know, we about to it. get into it. We, we about to get into it. So, all right, Ellie. Um, I just saw on your Instagram that you just bought a Mercedes G wagon. <laughs> Oh, you know, her name is Moolah. <laughs> Moolah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you just bought Moolah. So you That's went true. from being 27, four kids, living back home with your mom, um, having a job, because you still kept your job, right? I mean, well, you got a job eventually. So yeah. now you you you're you you make seven figures a year. You know? Let's let's go there. Let's um, go. how did you how, how did that happen? Like how did you go from making from being there to where you are now. I mean, you walked in with a nice purse. I don't know the name of that purse, but I know it was expensive. <laughs> you know what it I'm saying? A little, little something. Yeah, you come in here with a whole entourage. I'm like, that ain't cheap. You know what I'm saying? She, she, you cutting payroll checks. Um, how did you go from from there to where you are now? What What's the secret ingredient to, to, to start making seven figures a year? Wow. Well, the the number one ingredient is faith. Okay. Yeah. yeah and yeah. prayer. Yeah. Yeah. That's just number one. I yeah. want to make sure everybody understands. None of this is possible without that solid foundation. Right. Right. Because when I had nothing uh -huh. back at home with my mom mm -hmm. on EBT. Yeah. Cash aid. Yeah. You know that that was the income when the job left. It was like okay, let me manage this seven hundred fifty dollars a month in yeah. food stamps. Oh wow. Um, you know, so, but knowing at that moment, even though that that was m what my re reality was, mm -hmm. I knew that that wasn't permanent. Mm -hmm. I had to believe that that wasn't permanent. Mm -hmm. And that's where my prayer came in. Mm -hmm. So from there, the next step is to really take an inventory of what you know how to do and yeah. figure out who will pay you for what you know how to do. Ooh, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> back that up, back that up, back that up. To, 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 to start making income. Yeah. No, do an inventory on what do you know how to do and who will pay you to get the information on what you know how to do. Exactly. What do you know how to do well? So uh, my list, right? So everyone needs to make their list. Right. My list, I'm really good at sales. Okay. I'm yeah. really good at coaching. You know, yeah. I worked as director of sales. That's my whole thing. Wow. Yeah. Okay. That's my corporate background. That's your corporate background. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm really good at financial literacy. I'm a life insurance broker as okay. well. Okay. Um, I'm really good at really creating systems, mm. whether it's operational systems, sales systems, just ways for people to put organization into their business because I worked in startups yeah. and help it to flourish. Yeah, yeah. So when I made all this list and cooking and, you know, looking good, all those other things. But <laughs> All right, brothers. We are here. You know, I knew I knew she how to made do money, all... know how know how to cook. And she said she looked good. I look good. Wait, are you are you single? I am single. Okay, I wanna give you no trouble. Are you single? Is I'm it... like single, single. Nobody can tell me I'm somebody's girlfriend. You can cook. Can I you knew... clean? Cook and clean. I got four kids. What do I mean? You got to have a clean house. No, you don't. Oh, yes, you do. Well, okay. for me, you do. And you gotta make the home. She says you look good. Okay. And I look good, right? So I had all these lists, but I said, okay, let me look at what someone can pay me for that's directly related to what I've already done successfully. Mm -hmm. So I make my list. You also, as well, want to make a list of what you've actually accomplished with that. So when I was director of sales, mm -hmm. I helped the company I worked for scale to $4 million in revenue. Mm -hmm. So I really knew what I was doing. Mm -hmm. And I said, okay, this seems like close to where I might be able to turn this into something. So I said, how can I take what I used to do for this company? And I can't get, I, I applied to 50 jobs. 50. I tried my, yes. I tried my best to get a job, Anthony. 
This is right around the Right around the pandemic. COVID. Okay. Couldn't get no job. Couldn't get a job. With, right. the, with this long resume, okay, could okay. not get a job. So I said, okay, since no one's hiring me for this skill, how yeah. can I take what I do know how to do for businesses, but give it directly to businesses? Oh. So this is how I created my coaching and consulting. So, so that's what people should do. They should look at, okay, what do I actually know how to do? What do I have a proven record in? Yeah. How can I give it straight to the people that need it? Yeah. That's your business. That don't is. try to do something that you don't really have any experience in. Start there. Then you can always expand later. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So practically, how did you start? So I know one part of your story is you got the stimulus check. I did. And how did you flip that? So, stimulus check money, right? Ah. $1,200 hits my account. Well, really, I got mine and then enough for my kids. Yes. But the kids' money, we don't touch that. That right. goes somewhere else. Yeah. So my $1,200, I knew it was coming. I said, okay, this is my opportunity because cash aid is not going to give me this much, right? right? Right. This is my opportunity to take this and do something that I might not ever get the chance to do, at least not right now. Okay. So I put money on a ring light. Bought a ring light for my room. Yep, yep. Um, bought some domains for okay. my website, you know. Okay. Yeah. Purchased my LLC. Okay. Upgraded my phone. Okay. Upgrade. Upgrade. You know, <laughs> made a little deposit <laughs> payment. <you know? laughs> had to get a new phone. Had to get a new phone. Okay. Had to make sure, you know, was getting the best, as best camera quality as we could. Yeah, made yep. a little deposit. Yeah. Um, and I put a little bit on the side just to try to run ads, you okay. know. Um, and that was my startup money into my business. So the first thing I did with that ring light and with that phone, I went to Instagram and started creating content. Started creating content. So you took the message that's on the inside of you. Yes. Went out there and made a small investment. You didn't go out there and, and rack up a whole bunch of debt to get cameras and no. this and that. You took the means that you had. Yep. Turned it into what you could afford. Yep. And then you went to work. Went to work. So no excuses. None. And this is with the kids there at the house. Four kids at Four the house. Kids. And you're still living with your mom. And I'm still at my mom's house. So she's like, why are you always on your phone? Yeah. I'm like, mom, I'm trying to build something here. I need you to understand. But you're always on your phone. You got to take care of these kids. The babies are hungry. I need your help because I think this can become something. Was that difficult? Oh. You and, you, you, you and your mom dynamic? Very difficult. It was hard. How is she now? I'm curious. <laughs> seeing, seeing the success. Yeah. Seeing you winning. I mean, you you got two vehicles, one for you and your kids and one for you to, you know. To and one for the nanny, too, by the way. <laughs> but you know what? I mean, hey, God is good all the time. This is all within the last two years. This is all within, yeah, the last two years. I mean, literally, I started the business officially July 2020 okay. is like my start date. That's okay. when I really started posting. That's when I formed my entity. That's when I really was like, I'm in business. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah, where are we? We're February 2022. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. You know, so, so back to what you were saying about my mom. I mean, she's really proud. She's really proud. I think now her worry, at first her worry was, my daughter is 27 with four kids. What's going to happen? She's living at home with me, and she's on her damn phone all the time. Yeah. Now I think her worry is my daughter is a multimillionaire with four kids. Is she protected? Is she safe? Is she keeping a head on her shoulders? Is she spending enough time with her kids? Because I travel so much, you yeah. know. Um, but ultimately, she's proud. I'm so grateful to her yeah. because if she hadn't opened her doors, I don't know where I'd be going? right now. You know, if she hadn't watch the kids while I was going live and tried her best to keep them quiet so I could deliver the content, deliver the value. Yeah. Where would I be? Where would you be? You know, I, w I wouldn't be here, that's for sure. So that was such a foundational time. And that's really when I, you know, like you said, went to work, no excuses. Yeah. Got up before my kids, went to bed after the kids, created the courses throughout the wee night hours, you yeah. know, to make sure I could deliver this educational value to my audience that started at 300 people yeah. and here we are at 300,000 people. Wow. All because you just focused on what was on the inside of you. Yes. And then what can you do that other people will pay you for? Exactly. I'm, I'm curious. Yeah. You're not the only person who do what you do. I know. I'm not. Did that not scare you? Like, did it not like, like, well, she's doing that or he's doing that? Like, 
Or did you just say, you know what, cool, I'm just going to go in there and just do it and just see who just rocks with me? You know, I love that question because when I was looking, doing my market research before right. I decided to start, I looked at all the other business coaches, consultants, just people who were doing something similar and thought about, okay, what are they doing or what are they not doing mm -hmm. that I can come and kind of fill in that gap? Mm -hmm. I'm really grateful to have taken that moment to observe the surroundings and observe the market because it allowed me to lean in more into my voice. And I know that that's why certain people will come to me versus them because of the fact that I am a mother. Mm -hmm. I am a single mother. Mm -hmm. I have this you know, testimony. Yeah, yeah. And I was always very authentic in my delivery. You know, I could have gone into debt to get a beautiful space, right. an office, right. et cetera. But I didn't move out of my mom's house until after I had made a million dollars. Wow. I did it all right there because I felt like someone's either going to rock with me because they see me right. teaching this business and giving them what they need at my mom's house or someone's going to not rock with me for yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. And I chose to only have the people who were really going to see the value in it and go for it. Wow. So I never felt intimidated by the competition mm -hmm. because I believe whatever business you're in, there really isn't any competition. It's all about perspective and you and I could do the same thing, mm -hmm. but we'll both have a different way to do it and there's going to be people that buy from you there's going to be people that buy from me there's going to be people that buy from both, both of us. us yeah yeah. you know yeah. and so we're not competition we're just both in the same lane <sighs> in different cars yo listen man Ellie over here dropping some jewels <laughs> you know what i'm saying she 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 dropping some jewels and i hope you all are taking taking copious notes yes is that the proper word copious. yes it is copious you know what i'm saying a lot <laughs> you see you see what I'm saying? <laughs> That's a big word for me. <laughs> you know, but but I, I think that, uh, Ellie, one of the things I love doing at the table is giving people some practical steps on what to do. Right? I love that. And so I have five questions Good. that I really want to go through. And you already know them. Um, but I really want to give, like, five practical ones. Yes. And then. I love it. In these five. Y'all know, we're going to have some conversation about this single life. Oh, Lord. You know what I'm saying? We're going we're gonna to get there, boy. We're going we to get there, but let's get to the practical one. So those people watching right now, um, um, th later this fall, um, I am releasing a mastermind around how I've been able to build, you know, what I've done. Mm. Right? So I'm going to be teaching people how to really turn what God has put on the inside of them um, in the way that I do it. You I know what I'm that. saying? Yeah. And so I love that. I can't wait because I'm only going to open it up to like a very small group of people. Uh, but I want to ask you a question because you, you're doing this now. How do people, like if you're sitting down with me at the table right now. Right now. You know, and, and I say, yo, Ellie, how do I start a business? But for me, what kind of business should I start? So like. For those watching right now, they're saying, okay, cool, I have a full-time job. Yes. I want to get out of debt. Mm -hmm. So the majority of people of mine are looking to get out of debt and looking to build wealth. Good. So my method is, hey, keep your nine to five, but then on the side, get a small business. Yeah. Um, so that way you can get one to tax right off, produce more income. But they're like, okay, cool. What should I do? Right. How do I start it? Yeah. What's your thoughts? I love that. So I agree. You know, if I had the opportunity to keep my nine to five, mm -hmm. it would have been amazing. Ooh, yeah. But I was just thrust into it. And it was right. like, we either going to stay on EBT or we're going to get this money. So, Absolutely. You know, what's it going to be? Yeah. I think that for those who are looking to start a business while they're still at their job, mm -hmm. the first method I shared of making your list of what you're good at, what you already know how to do is mm -hmm. key. Mm -hmm. And, you know, go straight into consulting. Right. Yeah. So while you're at your nine to five, look at, OK, what skills am I already using here that I could, again, be paid for outside of here Teaching and start good. making money? Teaching good. You know? Yep. Boom. That's right there. Yeah. In addition to that, if you have a hobby, right? Maybe you love to make shea butters. Maybe you love to do hair. Maybe mm. you love fashion. Set up an online store. Ooh. Get into this e-commerce game. E-commerce game is the truth it's right the now. the truth. Set up an online store, either selling your own stuff or set up a drop shipping store. Ooh. Which can run for you in the background. And you're not even working that hard. You're not even working that hard. I was watching a show. Um, I forgot the name of a show, but yeah. there's this young lady on here and she sells female products. Mm. And she made $2 million Girl. in one year. Just from 
Crazy. getting products for females stuff. <laughs> Lady things. And just selling it online. Yeah. While she's working a job. While you, I'm telling you. And I'm like. I'm telling you. I'm in the wrong business. Listen. Listen. Bait goodies. Yeah. I mean, it can all be sold online. We have an unprecedented ability right now to be able to access people nationally and internationally simply through social media and the internet. Absolutely. So you can literally be at your job running up $20,000 a month, either consulting or in e-commerce. So that would be the first thing. And make sure, like you said, form that LLC. Absolutely. So Absolutely. if you're going to do e-commerce, make sure you do an online retail LLC. If you're going to do consulting, get yep. you a general consulting LLC. Yeah. That way... Anything you do have to spend is a tax write-off, as you know. Yep. Your home office. I mean, yep. you know, there's just ways. So much to, you can do around so, it. So many amazing things you can do. Yeah. But that can be your first intro into business. And what I tell people is, you know, the first business you start doesn't have to be your forever business, mm -hmm. right? You are just starting with what I call the path of least resistance. Mm -hmm. So if you know that you're naturally good at... For me, coaching mm -hmm. or sales, that's my path of least resistance. So I'm going to start with that. I'm going to build a solid brand and foundation around that. Mm -hmm. Now, when I want to go ahead and start my cooking channel, because I love to cook, when I want to go ahead and do, you know, my fashion line, because I, I be looking good, when I want to go ahead and do all of that, guess what? I already have, because <laughs> on my nerves, <laughs> I already have this solid brand built so people will will watch you. Would you watch my show? Would you watch my cooking? Listen, I'm gonna keep it a buck with you, and we talked about this already. I will watch. How I say this respectfully? <laughs> I will watch any good looking woman cook. As okay. a single man, see, I'll be right there, be like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 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 See? <laughs> and like, even go more get the cup so. behind you. <laughs> Let me stop playing. <laughs> this man right here is something. <laughs> 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 All right. So, okay, cool. See? Figure it out. So, exactly. Your first business doesn't have to be your forever business. Start with the path of least resistance. And then once you quit that nine to five, once you get that business up to five, mm. six figures a month, okay. then you might say, okay, now I really want to get into real estate. Now I really want to get into whatever the case might be. So, so, that's how you start. so I know some of the hurdles when I first started, right? Mm -hmm. When I started my, my own business because yeah. I transitioned from... Uh, my mentor and um, and good friend Dave mm. Ramsey out to on my own right, yeah. and I was so excited right, I know. and I was like, man, this is good. Nervous but excited yeah. that God um, gave me the opportunity to to do this. But man, I hit so many hurdles that mm. I didn't know I was going to hit. Like what? One of the hurdles that I hit was being doing it alone mm. and having to be. Everybody. Everybody. Yeah. I had to be my. I had to be the producer. I had to be the editor. I had to be on up on YouTube, watching how to do my own graphics for a while. Like I remember for the first two weeks of really starting this thing, I did not sleep. I lived on Celsius energy drinks and <laughs> and um, uh, Mountain Dew. Wow. Because it's like, yo, I. If this fails, it's because I didn't do it. Mm. I'm curious when you first started your business, what were some of the hurdles you had to get over to get to where you are today? And still, at our level, yeah. we still got hurdles. Oh, yes. And Ooh. some of these hurdles are even higher because we're, our, our careers are higher. Yeah. But when you first started, people who are just now starting out, so, all right, cool, I'm going to get this LLC, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. What are some of the hurdles that they should expect? Mm -hmm. And what are some of the hurdles? Uh, and what are the ways to get over those hurdles? Absolutely. So I think for me, one of the biggest hurdles I first faced was growth mm. online yes. and consistency. That's so good. Those are the biggest ones for yeah. me. And I think for any new business owner, especially now, that's going to be what they're going to face. You yes. know, so my top tips for overcoming or really just pushing through the growth. So good are, you know, you have to look at, okay, when I'm thinking about what my business does, what value it gives, what problems does it solve, I need to be creating content that speaks directly to that every single day and posting that 
every single day. Yes. That's what's going to make yes. people grow because you have to think about it. An audience is going to determine if they're going to follow you or buy from you based on what's in it for them. Mm. So your content should always be showing them what's in it for them. Hey, my business will show you how to do X, Y, and Z. My skincare will clear up your whatever. My food will whatever, right? That's what's in it for them. Beyond that, the consistency piece, the consistency piece, child, it's hard. It it's is hard, hard to, to be, be consistent. consistent. It is. Especially when you don't know what the outcome is going to be. Like, we don't really know if this is going to work or not. We don't. When you start this business. You don't. You're like, I mean, I hope I'm going to get some money, but. And after your research, research shows that it it should work. Right. You know, but life still can hit. Can hit. So it can be hard to be consistent when you don't know what's going to come to fruition after. Mm. But I think for me, what helped me to craft that consistency is to always have a list of goals and look at that every single day That's and so say, good. you know what? There has to be a consequence for my inconsistency. Mm -hmm. So if I don't show up for my business today, if I don't post, if I don't go live, if I don't get on a coaching call, whatever the case is, I won't be able to have X, Y, and Z in three months. Ooh! That's I real. You know, I won't be able to to buy this for my son's birthday. I right. mean, we have to create the same way when we don't go to work. Yeah. We get written up or whatever. Yeah, yeah. What is going to be that? that for us. For us. Yeah, yeah. What systems are you putting into place to hold you accountable for the choices that you make? Exactly. And I think the systems that you put in place hold you accountable for good choices and for bad choices. Good choice. I showed up. I I went in my room. I got in front of my ring light. I got in front of my my um my phone uh, that I did not um have to go rack up a bunch of debt for. <laughs> not at all. And um you know I did content today. Yeah. You know. And so because of that, my reward or my consequence is now I can post it and it's going to build my tribe. Exactly. Well, I went out in a date. It was a real good date. Slept in. <laughs> And we for I, I didn't. Uh, we didn't show up for our business. Exactly. What's the consequence? Now you just missed out on impact and influencing people. And now you're not building your tribe. And I think I love how you said, hey, identify growth and um, and identify, you know, just really being consistent. Yeah. That's hard for me still today. Mm -hmm. It's it's. It's like, man, I, oh, Jesus, like, I all right, you got to, Anthony, you need to schedule a whole week to record content, okay? And I got to get with my team. All right, cool. Then we got to be real good on social media. All yes. right, cool, great. But here's the thing, though. That growth part is going to be something serious. Yeah. Because if you're consistent, you're going to grow fast. You will. And if you're not prepared for the growth, that's a good problem to have. Yeah. But how quickly can you put systems in place? to maintain that growth. And that's so key because when I started to grow quickly, mm -hmm. I was doing all my own customer service up yeah. until 3 a.m., answering DMs, answering wow. emails, fixing things. Yeah. And it got to a point where I realized, okay, I'm probably effectively making less money because I'm doing too much. Yes, yeah. And and that's, that's when you all will get to a point where it's like, it will be worthwhile to me to bring someone else in to handle these elements so I can stay in my zone of genius. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which if your zone of genius is making the skincare, you need to stay there. Exactly. If your zone of genius is making the content, which is mine, I need to stay there, right? And that essentially 10x my income. Absolutely. Absolutely. Quick. Absolutely. Because then it, I could just say, okay, this is your area of domain. Serve my customers. Let me go out here and bring more customers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, absolutely. I think... You're absolutely right. Uh, when I first transitioned out on my own, I was like, all right, cool. I could do this on my own. I could set up a camera and do all this stuff. I know. I said, but I was like, no. I win when I can be the visionary and yes. go after my vision. I will win even better if I can put someone in that chair who can see my vision and be like, all right, cool. Let me help that vision be better. Yeah. That's why I brought on my boy CJ. He's been rocking me for years. Um, I'm not the best writer. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, I write like I talk. I'm a great communicator. Great. I love talking, but I hate writing. And I've written a book that's sold over <laughs> hundreds of thousands of I know, dollars. which you know I'm what like, saying? wow. But I hire a writer. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I have an amazing writer out of uh, Spain right now, and she's, I, I love, love her. She it's is, amazing. that's my girl. What up, Danny? Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And so what I've learned is, like what you said, mm -hmm. is, as you're growing, identify your strengths, identify your weaknesses, and hire someone for those for those weaknesses. 
Uh, because as we're growing with my team, I'm trying to figure out how to get rid of, you know what I'm saying, All stuff. Because I win when I can think of the ultimate vision and execute that vision and put people into place. And I like that. I like that too. I, I really do. And it makes it a we thing too, yes. you know? Yeah. I think the misconception is we get, you get rich and you get all this money alone, but it's never like that. It's yeah. really you get more the more people you bring in. Oh, man. That's one of my goals. One of my goals is that everyone on my team eventually, um, as my income is growing as an owner of the company, yeah. Um, I'm not the only one eating good. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Everybody like, I, eating steak I wanna and see, Yeah. I want to see my people making multiple six figures to even millions. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. If I'm a multimillionaire, I better have at least one or two millionaires on my team. Around me. I mean, come on. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, I so that. I mean, that, that's what we about over here. That's what we about over table. here. You know what I'm saying? With AOs. We making family. millions. Making yes. millionaires. Ap and that's what it's about. So my team, we got millionaires. Then my tribe, from the education and then from put them in, putting them in front of people like yourself, they're getting the wisdom and the knowledge so they can go out there and produce millions for themselves. Yeah, and they um, can. They one of my homegirls, Kezia Williams, Professor Keys, she said something that was so good. She said, we have so many black entrepreneurs, but we don't have black people who are able to employ mm. and have create jobs for other people. It's different. She said, the majority of us are entrepreneurs, but we only work for ourselves. Mm -hmm. We're not able to go out there and hire other people, pay them six figures, pr help them produce wealth. And I was like, yo. That's different. That's a whole nother ball game. Yeah. And that's what we're about over here. Yeah. Um, so this this is good. This is really, really, this is all oh, this is so good. Um, I would say about 40% of my tribe mm. are black single mothers. Yeah. Um, these are black single mothers who are educated. Shout out to them. Oh, man, mm. hands down. Um, and they have a job. Um, they have a small business on the side. Um, one of them that I really, really, really want to know is, how do you balance being a mother, um, singleness, dating life, and entrepreneurship? So you make the money. Yeah. And every time I see you on social media, you're in front of a lot of people, <laughs> in, inspiring and, and, and impacting people. You don't post about your dating life, so we don't know what that is, which is a good thing. <laughs> and we really don't see your kids. We saw I saw a couple of videos of you like educating your kids, mm -hmm. uh, which is great. But how do you do you believe in balancing? Do you believe in priorities? Like what's your how do you how do you really just yeah. nurture all three of those things? Well, I can definitely say it's not easy. Okay. It is a big balancing act. Yeah. Um, you know, I think that I know one of my purposes in life is to raise great children. Yes. You know, yes. and so. You have four of them. I have four of them. So I got a lot of raising to do. But I think the way I'm able to balance it, I have help, number one. So mm -hmm. I have my mom. She helps. Now I'm at the point where I do have a nanny okay. who is full time. Okay. Um, but even beyond that, I I tell myself that I have to make the time to be present yeah. as a mother yeah. and fit the business around that. Ah, uh, so priority is mother. Yes. Motherhood right now. Yes. Then you fit the business around being a mother. Yes. Try my best. Okay. Some days it's business yeah, yeah. and fit mommy around that, yeah, you know? Yeah. But as long as you know what's important to you, as long as you know what I want my kids to see me achieving. Yeah. I want them to see that their mom is working. I'm always explaining to them, mommy's traveling because I'm doing this. FaceTiming so you can see what mommy's doing. Yeah. Mommy's going to work so I can get this for you, take you here, give something to you. You know, I'm always yeah. making sure that they're a part of this growth process so that they understand it's not that mommy's just not home. No, mommy's doing this so we can have X, Y, Z, you know? Um, but there's definitely moments where mom guilt comes in. It's mm -hmm. very real, you know, especially because my kids are so young. Mm -hmm. But the way that I reduce that is to be grateful to God and know God wouldn't have given me this opportunity and put this on my plate if it weren't for my four kids. Mm -hmm. I believe that the drive that I have and the success I've had is because God knows I have four mouths to feed, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. So I think for the other moms who are wanting to build a business and wanting to get to this level, know that your kids are ultimately your fuel. Mm -hmm. They don't, they're not, I don't see them as a burden. It's hard. It's hard to do it with kids, but it also 
sets us apart from any other type of entrepreneur mm. because we're balancing at home and we're showing up for our business and doing an amazing job. So if anything, I feel more equipped to be successful because of the fact that I have so much more on my plate as a mother. Yeah. So it's like I hear you talking about your mom and I hear your heart um, yeah. around your kids. And it's funny, every successful person, whether that's man or woman, their heart is with their family, and then they all say, like, man, I, but I still do have that father guilt or that mother guilt by not seeing my kids as much. Yeah. Um, every multimillionaire or every billionaire that I've been around who's built a huge business, I know. they've all said, man, I could have did a little bit better, you know, with our kids. And I think one of the things with me being single, not having any kids, I think that's why I work as hard right now. And one of the things that we're putting into place here within my team is... How long are we working, CJ? What did we say? Two weeks? <laughs> yeah. So the goal is mm. we work two weeks out a month. Oh, wow. We bust our butts for two weeks. I love that. Because he has a family. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, and my thing is off. like, and yeah. So, well, the two weeks off is really more so of the team is off. I will still work like three days that next week. Yeah. Um, Just to handle the business outside of the show and other stuff like that. But I want to get to a point to where we work two weeks. Monday through Thursday, we bust our butts. Yeah. We're recording, we're working, we're traveling, we're doing what we got to do for two strong weeks with my whole team. And then, of course, um, after that, um, I want to be in a position to where I can spend one week and it's just all family. It's just all kids. You know what I'm saying? I, I take them to school. I show up and eat lunch with my son at this school. I can, uh, <laughs> so you know, cute. do this and do that. So yeah. it's like one of the things I'm learning is I got to maximize and steward my single season well. Mm. So that way when I do get married, I will see the rewards and the fruit of me making those decisions. So I'm putting into practice now yes. what I desire tomorrow, married life, yes. right? And so so that way- I agree with that. I will have father guilt, but it won't be as bad. Right. Because every parent who I've met, it's, it's like, just, I could have did better over yeah. here. But it's it's a learning. You you learn as you go. You learn as you go. So I, I listen to people like yourself. Yeah. I listen to my boy CJ. I listen to my parents. Like, Man, I wish we would have did this. Like, all right, bet. Let me write that down. Let me write that down. Right. Exactly. And it's like, I don't strive to be perfect. But what I am saying is like, yo, Ayo, put systems in place now. Yes. So that when you do have kids, you are already, you already have a system in place that is working for the family. I feel like I'm doing that too. I already have the kids, but I'm doing that in preparation for marriage again. Do you want to be married again? I do. I don't think so. I really do. I like, mean, you're young, you're successful, you got money. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I got moolah, you know. She walked up in here, y'all, with like six inch heels on. And she's already like six two. <laughs> so with them heels on, she's like six five. You know First what I'm saying? I'm just like, ah, oh, don't. No. So, but do you really want to be married? I really do. Why? Why when you already have, you, let's be real, you driving a Cadillac Escalade paid for, <laughs> you driving a Mercedes G-Wagon, and you just bought your nanny a car, <laughs> you live in a beautiful house, you got money, you know what I'm saying? What can a man do for you that you can't do for yourself? A man can help me steward all of this wealth. A man can lead me. A man can... You want to be led? Yeah. I mean, put the camera on her, CJ. I'm... Do, don't lie to my people. I'm not. You want to be led. I do. It's hard. It's important. I don't say this because every time I say this, like, oh my God, Anthony, just being so. <laughs> no, look, I think from the ladies that me and my brothers encounter who mm. are successful, most of them, it is hard to lead. It's hard to lead them. Right. Why? Because they, they have everything. You know but, what I'm saying? It's like they, but everything like is material. It. Ooh, that's so good. That's See, so good. See, the everything that you mentioned, yeah, yeah. car, house, money. Yeah, I have all that. It's material. Right. But you don't have love. That and, and legacy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Legacy isn't built alone, yep, right? Yep, yep, the yep. best way that we can serve God, the best right. way I can rear my children right. is with a man. Mm. So I feel like how you said you're preparing. To, to have that space. Right. I'm preparing now to have that space for when he comes. Because I don't want to, I want him and my kids to be my number one. Right now, my business and my kids are my number, number one. one. So I need to work, 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 get the business good so that 
he can be my number one focus. What is one of the things that you're learning in this new season, single season, successful single season for you, yes. that you're learning when it comes to dating men? What is one obstacle that you're running into with men? I'm curious. And you could be real. Let's see. An obstacle. I'm, I'm, mm, I think an obstacle I may be encountering is men who are perhaps intimidated Intimidated? Yeah, they're they're by they, your success. Yeah, they don't seem to be leaders. They don't seem to be, you know. I need I need I need you to tell me what to do. Are men really that intimidated? <laughs> I don't know, but I'm finding that, you know, I'm very conscious. Having been married before, I know what it takes to be a wife. Mm -hmm. I know what it takes to be in a relationship, and I've learned a lot. Having been married so young, I take accountability for a lot of my choices. You know, there are probably things in the marriage I could have done better. Mm -hmm. Maybe I could have listened more. Maybe I could have created more of an open space. So many things. Mm -hmm. So being self-reflective is key. So now when I'm looking again for a partner, mm -hmm. I'm really making sure that they're bringing what I know I need, but I'm also bringing what I know they need, mm -hmm. you know, because I cannot... As for you to complete me if I can't complete you. Mm. It doesn't work like that. Mm. So I think the biggest obstacle so far is just not quite finding someone who I think is ready for what I'm ready for. What are you ready for? I'm, I'm, I'm ready for a serious, committed marriage. And I think people assume because I have it all mm -hmm. that I don't need anything. Mm -hmm. But that's not the case. I'm with you. You know? I'd just like to ask a question. Yeah. Uh, because I think, I think I'm going to do a show with men. Oh. Bring men to the table because I've been hearing a lot of ladies say that, like, man, successful ladies, hardworking ladies run into this issue when it comes to men that they feel as if men are intimidated. And I do respectfully think that you all are misreading men. Mm. But I do believe that there are some men that might who be. are intimidated, but I think that some ladies are overlooking something very important. Hmm. And I think I'm just going to have a conversation at the table with men about that. Well, what's the something very important? You got to watch the show. Oh, come on. You're not going to tell me right now? Because I think, I mean, hmm. I, I, think, I think some ladies know it's not the man. It's you. How are you presenting yourself? that makes the man respond in a certain way that could come off as if he's intimidated. No, maybe you're just coming off a little bit too strong and masculine. Oh, now, no. don't don't get me strong. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying about you. I'm right. talking about it, ladies, in, 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 yes. from a general perspective, yeah. right? I think men love strong women, right? right? You know what I'm saying? It's like, in as a, a Christian, way. yeah, right. as a Christian, I, for me, it's like, when I look at like how God made... Um, uh, Eve for Adam, like she had to be strong to support him. Yeah. So man, we want strong. Yeah. We, we want a strong woman. Yeah. But there still is a way of presenting your strength that doesn't come off as masculine energy. Yeah. And I'm not saying, because I know y'all gonna be all up in the comments, <laughs> all up in my DMs. Okay. I am not saying this is all ladies, but one of the things I've learned in therapy is mm. the common denominator between all of my failed relationships, it's me. Mm. Not saying that I'm the reason why all of them didn't work, but I played a role a in role. all of them. Yeah. So what I've learned is to look at myself and like, all right, AO, what is something inside of you that sparks these in these other ladies? And I think sometimes do ladies really sit back and ask themselves that question. True. Especially the strong, successful career-driven, entrepreneurial woman, like, okay, cool, if you're having a problem and you're saying men are intimidated or men are not leaders, okay, cool, great. We have, there's To me, there's two things, or three. One, you just have bad luck choosing men, and you're just getting a, all the men are just horrible. Right. Two, maybe there's something inside of you that's sparking something inside of the men mm. that you're just not really sitting back and really analyzing. Um, and three, I don't know, you know? And so for me, I'm going to bring men to the table I and just figure that out. I think that would be a good out. conversation. Oh, it's going to be real cool. You know, it's like, it's gonna be so cool. I've, men, listen. Men what? Watch they love song. me. 
But I like Ellie, boy. She just keep it real. I look good. I can I cook do. and men uh, love me. They do. So it's never been an issue. I think the the key thing is just finding someone who's in alignment with my vision. That's like, that's good. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because getting a date it's not a problem. Okay. Okay. Having someone to talk to, not a problem. But it's like, are we ready for you ready to go there? Because that's where I want to go. <laughs> At the table. That's where I want to go. We I want to be. Real. I want to be. You want to be aligned. Here. I want to be in a line. Yeah. I want us to get yeah. married. I want us to serve God. Yeah. So I feel like one thing I've learned is okay. I had my. You know, it's been two years now since the divorce. So I've had. You know, I've gone on days. Yeah, yeah. God flew out. Have fun. All that. <laughs> You know, but now it's like, <laughs> <laughs> yo, Ellie, she was like, yo, the guys love me. You know what I'm saying? I had her having fun. I got flued out. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Okay, Ellie. But it's like, you know, have you, you have. Have you flown anyone out? What is this question? <laughs> <laughs> what, what is this question? <laughs> you make money. Have you flown any brother out to see you? No. Would you ever fly a brother out to see you? <laughs> oh, it would listen. No, Ellie, it would. It would have to depend. Ellie. It would have no, to, there ain't no depend. That's a yes or no question. No, no. That's a yes or a no question. A you got of- bread. If you dated a brother who made less money than you, would you fly him out? If we're in a committed relationship, yes. No, 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 no. We talking about dating. Dating. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, man. Ooh, I Ellie, don't know. You make millions. You meet a good man who is a school teacher. Okay. Makes seventy five thousand dollars a year, but he's paying off his student loans. He's focused on his vision, and he's saying, "Yo, Ellie, I would love to come out there to L A. But you know, L A. You know, what I'm saying a flight gonna cost me like six hundred. Get a hotel room that's gonna run me. I mean, if I'm staying a whole weekend in L A., you know, what I'm saying I can run me about fifteen hundred. You know, that's Twenty five hundred dollars I could have put towards paying off this debt so, so I could be a better man this. for you. You know what I'm saying? What I would do because I would never want him to feel, I would never want him to feel less than, right? I would never want him to feel like I provided you, a way for him to come. You out. beating around the bush? No. So I would rather, I would much rather go out there. I would much rather say, hey, you know what? No worries. I get it. Let me come. Let me come to you. So you gonna fly to him? I would much rather do that. And what I would do is, and you'll pay some, for it? Oh yeah, I would schedule some business out there. A uh, meeting. Businesswoman. No, she, we got a man. Businesswoman. <laughs> this ain't about you. <laughs> Since you can't come to me, we going to make this a tax write-off. <laughs> and while we made this a tax write-off, I'm going to squeeze you in. No. That ain't about no, him, no, Ellie. No, no, I'm not saying that. You just said it. <laughs> I'm not saying squeeze him in. But that would be a much better way to say, baby, I'm going to come to you. Let me make it easy. Ellie, no, 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 no. Let me come there. If, 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 if your boo flew to you and he turned it into a tax write-off, are you looking at him differently? What you mean, like if he had a business meeting? If he, he had a couple here? of business meetings, so that was his way of justifying to come see you. No, but see, that's different. It's not justifying. You, but that's what you. No, no, it's not justifying. It's killing two birds with one stone. It's smart. I ain't I would, mad at you. I would even tell him. I ain't mad at you, but I'm just like, ah, right, no. It was like, all right, since you can't afford to come see. No, me. see, you're putting words um, in my mouth. <laughs> what I'm gonna do you're is putting words in my mouth. I'm gonna make it make sense so I don't look at you differently. No, I wouldn't want him to feel like I, because some men can be sensitive. We Something can, I, yes, we can, we can. Can be sensitive, and if there's if money right is is in the mix, and he, it's if it's aware, if he's aware of the fact, very aware that I have more than him. I wouldn't want him to feel like I'm showing it by doing things like that. Maybe every so often, right? Okay. Maybe every so often. But I would want to create a space where, you know, he just feels comfortable. It's mm. like, he. Does, I don't want him to have to tell me he can't afford to come out. That I don't want, we don't but even you know what about the, that. But you know, you know what, though? I disagree with that one. Yeah? Yeah, so out there in L.A. where you are, right? Yeah. Um, uh, good friends, uh, Torre and Sarah Jakes Roberts, yeah. right? Tore and Sarah have created, they've created a space and a place where they can come and be on, honest, vulnerable, and transparent with each other. I love that. And I was just on Sarah's podcast a few weeks ago, and I said, man, I desire that. Mm. I want to be able to tell my woman, hey, listen, I can't do this. Okay. Hey, babe, I, I, I can't. Or can you help And me? not be ashamed to tell her the truth. Yeah. I said, because I think for me, it's just for me, just for Anthony O'Neill, um, 
let's say if I dated someone who makes way more money than me, and she's like, yo, I want to get on a private jet and go here, and that oh, costs no. da 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 I wouldn't be able to say, well, babe, I can't, I can't afford that. Yeah. And know that we've created a space and a place to where she's not going to look down on me, she's not going to judge me, That's and she's not going to leave me. That's all. Oh. So yes. I think for, which is another question, though, because now you pose this question. Could you could you be with a guy? I asked this to Terry. I asked this to like a lot of ladies who are successful like yourself, right? Um, especially ladies who make anywhere between, I would say, mid... Uh, because the average person, the average black, you want a black man or are you open to dating different races? I want a races? black man. So you, so you love all people, but you you only want to rock with a black man. Yeah, I need a black man. That's that's the Muslim sister in you. All right, yeah, cool. I need a black man. I got you. <laughs> um, so the average black man, yeah, not average. Forty eight percent of them will make less than thirty eight thousand dollars a year. Mm-hmm. So and only about eleven percent of all people in America will make six figures. I know. So this means if you want a black man. About half of them gonna be making less than forty thousand, <laughs> and the other half, I mean, we don't know. They, I mean, they're gonna be in between like forty and seventy. Yeah. And then you, you may squeeze out, you know, a few who make six figures a month. Ellie, Anthony, you, you bringing in seven figures a year. Yeah. You've been consistent with that for two years. Could you date a brother who work at Walmart? Now, Ooh! wait. Don't start. Ooh. Working at Walmart and making less than forty thousand are different. Okay, okay, fair. Rewind. <laughs> Ellie, <laughs> <laughs> could you date a brother who makes less than forty thousand dollars a year? I could. I could. You had to think about that. No, but I could. Be I have. I have actually gone on dates with someone. I didn't say going on a date. I could. I said, could you date, pursue, have a romantic relationship? Could you be on the arm of a brother in front of all your peers? Could you bring a guy that makes $40,000 a year around your other multi-millionaire friends? Absolutely. Okay. I believe you. I absolutely could. And you know why? Why? Because when you meet someone, their pay is not on their forehead. Absolutely. I agree. Their conversation, yeah, their yeah. leadership, yeah, yeah. their mentality, their yeah. mindset. Yeah. You know, I was at a certain phase in life where I was living off a $750 EBT card. Mm. If someone would have looked at me at that time and said, oh, I'm not going to believe in her. I'm not going to love her. I'm not going to rock with her, whatever. Yeah. Because of that temporary moment, they would have missed out on the millionaire who I am right now. Absolutely. And the fine millionaire, too. Oh, Thank this. you, God. She she's not God. arrogant. She's just very confident in who she is <laughs> and who God made her to be. Lord have mercy. God okay. is good. Yeah. So so when I look at a man who mm. may be in a season of making yeah. less than forty thousand a year, but he checks off all the other things on the list. He's a leader. He's kind. He's generous. He's loyal. He's fe- he's God fearing. He's faithful. Why would I turn all that away mm. because of the temporary pay he's making? Because if I'm really who I know God made me to be, which mm. is a, a woman who can create wealth, how would I not create that for the both of us? And yeah. if he's yeah. a leader, yeah. God-fearing, he'll know, oh, that's a good woman. Let me, if I were to give him, say, hey, start this business. Let's do this. He won't be making 40000 for long. No, that's right. I think that that mindset is good. I tell ladies, and I'm not a relationship expert, but I am a man. Yes. And what I tell ladies is, man, listen, never date a man for his potential. Date a man for the fruit that you see that's coming his from his promise. potential. Yeah. yeah. So it's like if you see him producing from his potential, mm-hmm. that is a brother that you get with him and you rock with him. Yes. And he will be that man that you desire. Because I remember yeah. being that guy. There's this chick. Oh, my God. I thought she was the finest Ooh. woman in the world. I I was just like, I was just mesmer. I was just like, oh my god. And my 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 uh my right hand man CJ he he knows her, and she would never take me serious because I was a youth pastor. Mm. Because I was only making like thirty eight thousand dollars a year. Then when she started seeing me all over TV and all over the road and doing this and doing that, oh my gosh, she became the most sweetest woman in the world. But I'm like, yo. 
I was producing back then and you didn't give me the opportunity to show you the kind of man I can become. And listen, I feel like that's what causes a lot of women to miss out on a lot of good men. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, is we look at what's what's now not for what could be. Yeah. You know, and, and again, I'm not saying date potential, but I am saying date promise. Oh, that's so can, good. You can see women, we have that ability. We can see something that's brewing under the surface in y'all men, and God gave us the ability, I believe, to pull it out. So that, you know, that's why I know where I am right now. I don't need a man's money. Mm -hmm. That's not what's going to make me feel like you're leading my household. Yeah, yeah. What's going to make me feel like you're leading my household is when I come home from making the money, yeah. if you're there to make sure all of us are good. Protection yeah. and leadership and stewarding is not just money. It's so action. It's mindset. It's discipline. So. All right. One last fun question. How tall are you? Without am, without heels. Without heels, 5'11 and a half. And then with heels, you are? About 6'3". All right, cool. So you, you can date a brother who make less money than you. Can yes. you date a brother who's shorter than you? <laughs> Don't lie. La la that's why. Uh, yes. You just no, lied. No, I didn't lie. Oh, I my can. God. She is and lying I'm at the table. Yes, I'm saying yes. Have you ever done it I before? I have. That's why I said yes. I have. How did you feel? You know... I felt you're at the table when I had my heels on. It was a challenge. I'm not going to lie. When I had my heels on, it was hard because it was like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> and I, and I like to wear my heels. Oh, so man. that was hard. But like I said, same with the money, the feeling, mm. if you can scoop me up, hold me close, hold me down, height, you know, listen, <laughs> And, Hi. And you said you're single, single? I'm single, single. Uh, brothers. I'm just saying, height uh, is... Brothers. You know, there's uh, there's brothers. times where height don't, don't matter. Y'all better come correct, brothers. <laughs> Y'all better come correct. All jokes aside, yeah. such a dope, such a dope show. Yeah? Such a dope show. So much fun. Um, you have a um, new signature course that you're launching, which I think is very important. Um, and it's called Monetize You, Leveraging Your Knowledge, Talent, and Skills to Build a Successful Digital Business. Talk a little bit about that and how can people get uh, a part of this course? Yeah, so uh, I'm really excited to develop this. You know, what we we're speaking on earlier in terms of how do we go from who we are right now to then having a business. It yeah. really is looking within yourself. Wow. What are you good at? Yeah. What have you already accomplished? What transformations have you achieved yourself that you can monetize by either turning into a course, mm -hmm. turning into a product, turning mm -hmm. into a service-based business, mm -hmm. and, and start building your wealth? Wow. Um, so, yeah, it's coming out. It'll be released at the very beginning wow. of March. Wow. And it will be an opportunity, a full course where people will learn how to create that list, yeah. then how to price themselves, then how to market themselves on social media, mm -hmm. then how to get clients, and then really how to scale and get more clients and put the systems in place. Yeah. So it really is an opportunity for me to create um, a space to really show people how I did, how I built the business that I have because I followed this exact framework essentially yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, but people can use it for whatever they happen to be good at and monetize their gifts yeah man I love it um, so you guys we are going to put uh, a link to that I'll be very honest with you all um, I rock with her so I am an affiliate so when you do yes. click on it she's going to give me a little something something but I'm it doesn't him up. it doesn't cost you any more money at all yeah. um, I like to be transparent uh, with, with my tribe because I really don't push a lot of courses um, on my on my channel right um, I think there's only one, you, Terry's, um, and then uh, my homegirl, Amy Porterfields. Oh, I love her. Um, and my, my CPAs. Yes. So I have four. So I bring on a lot of guests, but uh, if, if, if it's not creditable, if they haven't really built something, yeah. they don't get to push their courses on I my like channel. I like that. If That's they great. do talk about it, I don't want to be con connected to it. Yeah. You know? So I rock with you, you guys. Um, I think that a lot of you all watching right now are trying to figure out, hey, how do I start something on the side that can start generating some income? And we learned today that she went from being a single mother, four kids, living at home, living off of $750 EBT, and now she's making seven figures. 
uh, driving her dream cars, living in the beautiful city of L.A., full-time nanny, being a mother, dating young guys. <laughs> not young guys, dating shorter guys. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Getting flown out and flying to people. Uh, and so if this is the life that you desire as far as in just you want the freedom, yeah. the financial freedom to do the things that you desire, yo, check out her course. Um, and uh, I'm going to get some wisdom from her. Yeah. And then later on this year in August, man, I'm, I'm going to launch my thing too. Yeah. Something similar to this. Um, but yo, uh, we'll put the link in the show description. Check it out. Uh, you guys, thank you so, so, so much for coming by, Ellie. You are amazing, amazing yo. No, you're amazing. You killed it. Thank this, you, man. This, this the girl. Y'all, I'll fly you out. I'll take it. I'll fly you out. You going to fly me out? I get a private jet? <laughs> you get Delta One. You get Delta One. Delta One? Yeah. I'll take a Delta One. You know what I'm saying? See, see what I'm saying, brothers? Flight. See what I'm saying? She's talking about she won't fly. She, psh, at right. <laughs> at right. Guys need to be flown out, though. You know what? I do agree. Like, I God would should. definitely... I would definitely fly a guy out. That guy I wouldn't should. want to make it a habit because I wouldn't want nah, them to feel. Every feel, now and then. But every now and then. You know, you know, hey, babe. Trade in places. Babe, you know, I got your ticket. Come on out. Come on out. Come see me. Man, listen here. He'll get to. Never, let me be quiet. We. <laughs> be quiet. Yo, we love you all. Thank y'all so much, man, for rocking up with us, you guys. Do not forget to hit that subscribe button. Do not forget to. Um, Share this video with someone. This is a great show. Share this with your single ladies. Share this with people who are struggling to go from where they are now to where they want to go. Uh, because this show will bless you. All right. Yes. Peace out.